This is an introduction to the network view. The network view is a graphic depiction of nodes on the network and conversations between them as indicated in packets received by FTS. Statistics, addresses, and names can be shown at each node. The user has complete control over which of those are shown and in what order they're shown. For example, here we're showing bytes total, packets total, IP address, and MAC address. Those can all be hidden. They can all be shown, which is a little overwhelming. We can restore what we had before, or we can set it to something else. For example, utilization, bytes sent, bytes received, IP address, DNS name, and MAC address. The orange dot is a pseudo node, not an actual device. Its purpose is to serve as a broadcast endpoint. An orange line indicates a broadcast message. Orange lines are drawn to the orange dot so that broadcasts are graphically apparent. Each node has a tooltip that shows all the information for that node. Conversations can be shown. They can be shown selectively. And you'll note that there's a little arrow at each end to indicate the direction of the conversation. We can also show all conversations. It can be a little easier to read them if they're on top. The stats graph shows the statistic that is selected here, sorts it and displays it in descending order. Now I'm going to start a new capture so we can see nodes coming in. So I'll stop this capture. Start a new capture. The first node comes in here at the 3 o'clock position. Subsequent nodes appear below that. And all nodes are arranged in a smooth oval shape. After a while, things get so congested that you really can't read them anymore. And that's what filters are for. We are currently unfiltered. The no broadcasts filter removes all broadcasts. So the orange dot and all orange lines have disappeared. There is a top N filter, but both the value of N and the statistic are user selectable. The value of N is selected here. So we could change that to five, for example. The statistic is the same one used by the stats graph, so we could change that to packet sent or to nodes total. There is a no broadcast version of an N filter, which removes all broadcasts before doing filtering. The always shown filter is used for both inclusion and for isolation. So for example, if the two nodes we really care about are this node, we can mark it as always shown, and this node, and mark it as always shown. When we apply the always shown filter, those are the only nodes we see. A white inner dot is drawn to indicate that the only reason these nodes are being shown is because they're always shown. We can also use this filter for inclusion. If we go back to our filter, and I'm going to take off the current always shown attributes. If there is another node that we care about, and there could be more than one, but let's say right now it's just this one, we'll say always show and then reassert our filter. You can see that this node is still visible, even though it's not part of the filter. You know it's not part of the filter because it has the white inner dot. If it ever did become part of the filter, the dot would turn blue. This lets you simultaneously monitor the information for this node and also whether it's part of the current filter. Currently, we are looking in uh, exploded oval layout. There's also a regular oval layout. The difference between them is that regular oval layout leaves gaps for filtered out nodes, 
while exploded oval layout does not. Exploded oval layout is thus easier to read in general, while regular oval layout makes it more clear which nodes are coming and going. So if I filter on something that changes pretty quickly, utilization being that thing, utilization is megabits per second over the last 10 seconds, and you can see that nodes are coming and going. We're on a fairly quiescent network, so the utilization is changing quite a bit for the individual nodes. There is also a branched oval layout. This layout has an overview window that shows the entire network, and it has a movable and resizable viewport. And you can see that as I move it, the detail window changes to match. It can be resized by dragging on a corner, dragging on a side, or by using the mouse wheel, which is what I'm doing now. This layout is especially useful for manually positioning and isolating nodes. I'm just going to change to something here where it won't jump around quite so much. An alias can be associated with each MAC address. An alias is an arbitrary string up to 200 characters in length. And uh, let me display those, of which there are uh, a couple at the moment. That can be set via the right-click menu. And it takes effect immediately. They can also be set from the node database. The node database dialog shows all addresses and names for all nodes. Double-clicking on a row lets you set the alias. The DNS name is resolved automatically by default. That can be turned off if desired. IP addresses are resolved to DNS names at most once per second to keep the impact on network traffic small. There are a number of other features, not the least of which is using a black background, which when combined with all the nodes, provides some really cool computer art. This has been an introduction to the network view.